So verse number nine, Allah saying, "Yoma yajma'akum li yom al jama'ah zalika yom al taqabun." So be mindful the day when He will gather you for the day of gathering. That will be the day of loss and gain. Taqabun is the gain and loss in that matter. Whoever believe in Allah and does righteously, he will write off his evil deeds and will admit the, him to the gardens beneath which the rivers are flowing or rivers flow, where they will live forever. That is the greatest achievement. That is Fawz al-Azim. That is the everlasting, never-ending success. Fawz is the everlasting, never-ending success. The great, great is Azim. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا أُولَيْكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا And those who denied and, our, and disbelieve and rejected our signs, Ayatina means Allah's signs is the Qur'an, Islam and the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and the previous prophets they are the signs of God Torah and gospel were the signs of God those who reject them disbelieve in them are the people of the fire they will be the dweller of fire Khalidina fiha they will be there forever and Bi's al Masir which is an evil place to be so this is something uh, very simple straightforward Allah Ta'ala is telling no if sense or button here. Believe in Prophet, believe in Allah, believe in the prophets of Allah, believe in the scriptures and divine guidance from Allah. It's the guidance and the rules a very specific, certain thing. Something which I was thinking the other day, very interesting. Look, who in, in the world of any knowledge tells you, earn, make living. And if you made living, you just cannot make living by cheating and lying. You have to do the just earning. You cannot lie, cheat, steal, rob, and take interest in usury and all that. And then Allah also tells you, in the Quran teaches us, and the Prophet Muhammad taught us, when you may gain wealth above certain amount, then you should give it to the poor and needy also. So you're actually bounded by you should have certain rules to make living. Like any country, when we have in America or any country, uh, bribery, cheating, stealing, robbing are standard rules. These rules are based on the teaching of the Prophet. Because in Christianity, there is no specific rules. These rules, they basically took it from the Islamic tradition that you have a rules to live by. You cannot earn usury. You cannot steal and rob. And once you get that much money, then you also spend on others. This is something very, very uh, unusual. So religion teaches us the discipline and etiquettes of living and taking care of fellow human. Uh, let's listen to the verse number 11. ما أصاب من مصيبة إلا بإذن الله ومن يؤمن بالله يهد قلبه والله بكل شيء عليم No calamity befalls one but with the leave of Allah and whoever believes in Allah he guides his heart Allah is all knowing about everything. Obey Allah and obey the Messenger. But if you turn away, then our Messenger has only to convey the message clearly. Allah Allah is such that there is no God but He, and in Allah, alone the believers must place their trust. Yeah. So these three verses, 11, 12, and 13, Allah says, Ma asaba min musibatin illa bi idhnillah. There's no hardship or calamity befalls on a person or any nation except by the leave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What we see as a believer that we get a hardship, it is for test. And for the sinner, it's a punishment of God. How do we know the difference? If you get into trouble or if a person gets into trouble and he become more devout believer, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's test is on him. If the person is start rejecting Allah and start denying the faith, that is the punishment. So, and whoever believe in Allah, 
yahdi qalbahu allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide his heart so when a hardship comes in allah guides that person when he seek the help to and turn towards allah in other words believers are put through the trial so they will be more devout in their faith rather than rejecting and turning away wallahu bi kulli shay'in alim indeed allah is all knowing and all aware of everything the knowledge and obey allah and his messenger فَإِن تَوَلَّيْتُمْ فَإِنَّمَا عَلَى رَسُولِنَا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ And obey Allah and His Messenger if you turn away. So indeed upon us is to convey the only message from the Messenger's duty. And بَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ A clear manifest message is to be given to you. And then Allah لا إله إلا هو Allah is the personal name of God Almighty. And لا إله None is worthy of worship إلا هو Except Him he here's god has no gender but who who is the is the word is a muscular gender taken but god has no gender not man or woman and upon allah is the total displacement of the trust is by the believer the mu'min here is the promise of to the mu'min there's in quran nowhere we have a promise for muslim there's all promises for the mu'min mu'min is great uh, a higher level than the believers alone uh, one thing we need to understand today we see the people of Gaza what they are going through they have been basically incarcerated and, and they basically are in concentration camp there are no food water and anything allowed they've been bombarded from above they've been shot from the below and they, everything is done and what they're doing they are putting their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is for Allah فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Sometimes when we see this calamity and hardship, we start thinking where is God, why God is not helping, but we should know. Prophet and his companion were put in three years of incarceration. That was in Shoaib Abi Talib. They were in a concentration camp of their own property. They were not allowed to do business and trade, and they were not allowed to do anything, activities to make their living. They were starved from the food. Some people used to eat leaves of the tree which fallen down, and they, many people died in there. Among them was a prophet's wife, Khadija radiallahu anha. She was elderly, and she could not sustain this. Uh, social boycott which was considered as a incarceration they would not let them eat or have a trade business or trade or food which was not available for them many of them were going hungry for days and in the battle of uh, uh, in the Badr where Muslims are only 330 and the other one and they were only 70 camels or rides and they were not even enough swords and they were invaded by one third 1000 uh, army of Quraysh with the fully equipped and fully weaponized and everything and powerful with the food and everything and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Muslim 313 victory over those mighty powers and then we see in the battle of trench prophet muhammad and muslims were incarcerated and they were also they had to build a trench again around them so that they will not be attacked by the army and they were all arabs all arabs tribe it's like a united nation of that time they all like what they did to afghan people what they did to the iraq they did to the syria and they did now they are doing into the uh, into the uh, uh, Gaza people. What they're doing is that basically all nations who are with the might and weapon and all that, they are coming and attacking them. But their sin is nothing but they have just born that land. And they are being displaced and they have nowhere to go. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they're dying. The children are being dismembered and broken. You see those videos, that's a horrific example. And they're justifying this crime against humanity. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we pray them. Pray for, pray for the peace, but they should be, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should take revenge from those who are doing this. So we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the help of the oppressed anywhere, any nation, any country, because that's why United Nations is supposed to be. So they put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are many people who are seeing what they see, and they're changing their heart about the belief. And many people are embracing Islam by reading the Quran and by understanding it and the situation. So Muslim in any form is a blessing for the mankind. Their lives will not be wasted. Listen to the verse number 14. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu inna min azwajikum wa awladikum adu wa lakum fahdharuhum wa in ta'fu wa tasfahu wa tawfiru fa inna allaha ghafoor rahim O oh, you who believe, among your wives and your children there are some enemies for you, so beware of them. And if you forgive and overlook and pardon, then Allah is most forgiving, very merciful. Inna ma 
ولدكم وأولادكم فتنة والله عنده أجر عظيم Your riches and your children are but a trial As for Allah, with him is a great reward فاتقوا الله ما استطعتم واسمعوا وأطيعوا وأنفقوا خيرا لأنفسكم ومن يوق شح نفسه فأولئك هم المفلحون So, observe taqwa, total obedience to Allah In awe of him, as far as you can And listen and obey, and spend in Allah's way, it being good for you, and those who are saved from the greed of their hearts are the successful. So verse number 14 is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is directly addressing to the believer, Ya ayyuhu al-lazina amanu, inna min azwajikum, in among the, your spouses, or awladikum, in your children, lakum uduwun lakum. To, to, among your or children and wives, there are your enemies that matters. Fahzuruhum, so beware of that. And if you let go of their wrongdoing and forgive them, and forgive them, indeed Allah is more forgiving. So we as a parent have an obligation to seek um, forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, overlook their behavior and pardon them and seek the forgiveness. Three part a parent should do, we should overlook their mistakes, pardon them for their wrongdoing and then forgive, uh, seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness for them, which we all do, all parents do, whether believer or non-believer. But those who believe, this is particularly they are addressing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then, in the wa and then Allah says, in the, uh, your amwalikum, uh, your riches, your wealth, and your children, there is a trial. Fitna in Urdu means a mischief, but here is a fitna means exam, a test, which is mischief, mischievous test for you. Wallahu in the hu ajrun azim. Indeed, with Allah is a great reward. So we need to do is to be patient, to be persevere, and stick together. So be conscious of Allah to your best of your abilities. وَاسْمَوْا And listen. وَعُتِيُوا And obey. وَأَنْفِقُوا خَيْرًا لِأَنْفُسِكُمْ And spend in the path of Allah. This is good for you. وَمَنْ يُقَ شُحَ النَّفْسِ This is a word which is uh, uh, greed, greediness of his likes. فَأُولَيْكَ هُمُ الْمَفْلِحُمْ Whoever contain his greediness and, 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 uh, and the desire and temptations is going to be saved and is, is going to be uh, successful. Uh, it's very beautiful words. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to comprehend it. Let's listen to verse number 17 and 18. إن تقرض الله قرضا حسنا يضاعف لكم ويغفر لكم والله شكور حليم. If you advance a good loan to Allah, He will multiply it for you and will forgive you. And Allah is appreciative, forbearing. The عالم الغيب والشهادة العزيز الحكيم. The knower of the unseen and the seen, the Almighty, the All Wise. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us who among you will give a good loan to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In Allah qardan hasna, yudha'ifu lakum. Allah will increase it. There's nowhere where you give a loan and return back in the increment. Or and then also forgiveness. So Wallahu uh, Shakurun Halim. Indeed, Allah is all appreciative of those who are forbearing. Alim al Ghaibi wa Shahada. And he is aware of the unseen and is a witness of it. Al Aziz, the mighty and Hakim and wise. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all these attributes of his own when you give in something in the name of Allah. And this is something if we could understand. Uh, there was a story about Usman, the third Khalifa radiallahu anhu, the of Muslim Caliphate. Uh, he had had a well of water for people he bought it and muslims were at that time in medina had no water source and jewish were the owner and he would tar charge enormous amount of money so he bought it and gave it for free to muslims so somebody came in and he wanted to buy it from uh, usman so he offered him double triple quadruple up to 10 times the price and he keep asking him would you sell it to me and usman keeps saying no i got a better deal 
And he said, well, who can give you more than 10% of it? He says, my, pro my God promised me that he will reward me for more than that. So uh, he devoted, he gave it for free for order for mankind. And that, that was in the Muslim country and it was the Muslim state. So we could see that from our Islam, from the elders of Islamic faith, we learn this etiquettes of taking care of other for the sake of Allah. The return is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we do it our limited one, but we seek for unlimited return. And Allah has no limits in his treasures. So with this, I will stop now. And uh, we will begin with the Surah As-Saf, which is chapter number 61. This is the end of Surah At-Tahabun. Bear with me.